hey! Woohoo! Mr. War here. Yes, it's another math video. I couldn't wait. Oh, it's like waiting. Mr. War, when are you going to do another math video? Here it is. The time has come. Yes, for all of us too? That's right. Ooh, algebra. Wow, scary. Less than 3.10. And look at what we have here. Oh my goodness, look at these people in the canoe. Yeah, wow, it looks like they're going through like the jungle. And look at that, safety first. They have on their life jackets. Oh, I love canoeing. I did that as a child myself. Now, let's go ahead and get started with the topic, which is patterns with decimals. Okay, cool. The essential question, the whole guiding purpose of our lesson says, how can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with decimals? Okay, sounds cool. But of course, we have to unlock the problem. That's right. Real world, baby. We got ourselves a real world problem. Let's take a look. It says a state park rents canoes for guests to use at the lake. It costs $5 to rent a canoe for one hour. $6.75 for two hours, and $8.50 for three hours, and, well, there's another and, $10.25 for four hours. Now, it says, if this pattern continues, how much should it cost Jason to rent a canoe for seven hours? Oh, I love these kinds of problems. Okay. Now, we have a little bit of information we need to look at, some vocabulary. It says, a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. Okay, ordered list, they're in order. Okay, that makes sense to me. And then it says, a term is each number in a sequence. Okay, very, very different. So a term can be the number in that particular sequence. Okay, so the whole thing is almost called like the sequence of numbers. A term is one of those numbers in the sequence. Okay, I think I have it. You can find the pattern in a sequence by comparing one term with the next term. Cool. Yeah, this sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> the excitement is just overflowing. It's a step one. Write the terms you know in a sequence. Then, look for a pattern by finding the difference from one term in the sequence to the next. Okay, it's helping us out here. Well, that first hour was $5. There it is. And it says at the top, it says if you add $1.75, you'll arrive at that new amount of $6.75. Yes, that's mental math. And then, it goes from $6.75 to $8.50. Since we're talking about a sequence, and we always talk about a pattern, it says to look for a pattern by finding the difference from one term in the sequence to the next. So let's go ahead and check. You know, they put $1.75. Is it going to follow that pattern? Let's see. Let's see. So we need $8.50 minus $6.75. We have to come all the way over to the ones place. Let's loan one one. To this guy, which turned into 10 tenths, he's going to load one tenth to make 10 hundredths. Now we have, oh wait, decimal. Mr. War, you didn't do your, you know. Bring it on down. That's right. What do you know? Yes, do you see what I see? I think so. Yeah, $1.75. So it's following this pattern, $1.75. It's being added each time to each term as it's used here, we add one more dollar and 75 cents here. Yeah, woohoo! yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's the difference between each one of those terms. This is so easy, that was step one. Ooh, but there's more steps. Yes, we have step two. This is write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. They're using all these new terms here, so I wanna make sure that we're clear. It says write a rule, and then also says a pattern, we're talking about a sequence, we're talking about a term. It'd be very easy to get confused by all of these new vocabulary words. So, something I wanna really make sure is that you understand that from each one of those terms in that sequence, and what was that? That was $1.75 adding. So we would just say that adding, or just how about let's just add $1.75. That's the rule in that sequence, okay? I hope that made some sense. I tried my best. Okay, step three, extend. Ooh, what does extend mean? 
was like to kind of continue, go beyond, right? Extend the sequence to solve the problem. Okay, so now we have all the way up to $10.25, so we have to continue on. Well, now that we know the rule, we can just say $1.75 on each term. Yeah. I don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> it's stuck. Okay, $1.75. Okay, we're adding that. Bring it on down. Yeah, that's right. You have to bring down that decimal point. Now we have 10. Now we have 9. We have 10 again. Oh, got to bring up another one. Does that seem reasonable? Let me see. 75 cents under there. Yes, that does seem reasonable. And what's nice is these $1.75. We can do that. Simple, don't even need to put the numbers down. And then 75 is probably what I like to try to do. Let's see if we do this in our head. Take one of the, take a quarter from this $1.75, add it on to him to make him $14. So now you have a dollar fifty added on to the 14 makes it fifteen fifty. I like to do that because our brain should always be working actively. Okay? So it should cost, that's right, $15 and 50 cents to rent a canoe for seven hours. I don't know. Do you think that's a good price? I don't know. Doesn't seem bad. It'd be cheaper if you probably got your own canoe, but then you'd have to actually buy the canoe. So the observation that we can make about the pattern, the sequence that will help us write the rule. Well, when you're looking at the, I think looking at the terms, okay, remember those are the numbers. If the, if the terms are increasing by the same amount, well, then that rule would have to require addition. And that's what kind of helped us write the rule. So by just looking at the terms, we could say that the $5, $6.75, it was increasing. So we knew we were going to add something. And there we go. Basically what I just mentioned just a moment ago. Okay, it's time for Page Master. Yes. Example. It says write a rule for the pattern in the sequence. Then find the unknown terms in the sequence. Okay, this seems like fun. Let's take a look. We have 29 and 6 tenths, 28 ooh, and 3 tenths, 27. You may notice right away, the numbers are decreasing. Yes, they are. They, they're getting smaller. So one thing we know, there's some subtraction going on. Well, let's take a look and see what that, maybe that difference is between the first two terms. So let's see, we have 29. Ooh, look at that bright color. Yeah. Okay, and then we have 28 and 3 tenths. We're going to subtract. Decimal, bring it on down. Okay, that never gets old. My goodness, could that part be any easier? Now the question is, is that really the pattern and what we call the rule? Is that going to be the rule for the, this particular pattern? We don't really know. It's just two numbers. It might not be. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add that 1.3 because I'm just going to kind of do it reverse. And I'm going to add that to the 27, which is the third term, as you can see. So I'm going to take the 27 then, and I know you're thinking, Mr. War, we can already see it. I know. We're going to go ahead and add that. Now I'm also going to give this guy a decimal and a zero. Yes, I can do that. Okay, now adding. Bring it on down. Decimal needs to be lined up in a row. And we have three, we have eight, and of course we have two. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, that is exactly what I'm looking for because that's what I have, 28 and 3 tenths. So that is the pattern. Nice. Now I just need to subtract my one and three tenths from each succeeding kind of decimal, or I could be really sneaky and add one and three tenths from this 20 and five tenths. You know, either way would work, but let's subtract. Let me go ahead and move this guy out of the way. Shrinky, 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 shrinky. Okay, I want to say slinky. It's a slinky. Now, it's a shrinky job. So let's go ahead and we'll take our 25 and 7 tenths, subtract our 1.3, which is 1 and 3 tenths. I like it. Now I can subtract another 1 and 3 tenths because we know that is the rule. It's the rule. Don't, can't mess with the rule. It's the rule. That's all there is to it. 23 and 1 tenth. We're going to do it one more time to get our next... One in the line. We end up with two tens. And our final answer here is going to be 21 and a tenths. And of course, we could subtract one and three tenths from this term. We're calling them terms now, right? Because that's the term in the sequence. It's just a number. Don't freak out. Okay, it's just a number. And then, of course, it continues. Now we go to step one. Look at the first few terms in the sequence. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't even read step one? You mean we've been just doing this whole thing and I wasn't reading the directions? Oops. Oh, well. So I, <laughs> that's what happens. I just kind of want to teach math, you know. 
Anywho, what do we have here? So it says, <laughs> this is, we did think that. Write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. What operation can be used to describe a sequence that it increases? Well, that's kind of, that increases? Means it makes more, goes up. We kind of think is addition. What operation can be used to describe a sequence that decreases? I know I'm reading very fast. Oops, just because I feel like subtraction. Of course, when it decreases, that means it's getting lower. Decreases, get small. <laughs> I'm just going to call it get small. Increases, get huge. Okay, so the rule we determined was, yes, subtract, because we were subtracting. Subtract. I'll put a colon there, just because that looks cool. Uh, one and three tenths. That's what we were subtracting. Use your rule to find the unknown terms. Oops, we already did that too. And then complete the sequence above. Okay. Oh, well. Now, what do we have here? It says, explain how you know whether your rule for a sequence would involve addition or subtraction. We talked about that, so this seems really easy to me. It just means if the sequence, okay, increases from one term to the next, well, then the rule could involve addition, wouldn't you think? And of course, if the sequence, the blah, 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 blah. If the sequence decreases from one term to the next, well, then the rule could involve, yeah, you guessed it, subtraction. Okay, I don't know, it's just me, but you know, I just kind of feel like I could just kind of bring a whole small group of like little cave boys and girls and uh, they could do this math. It's pretty easy. Okay, so let me go ahead and write my notes. And there you go, my friends. Time to move on. Now it says try this. Okay, with an exclamation point. Write a rule for the sequence, then find the unknown term. All right, we're doing this full force now with finding the rule. Okay, I see 65.9, and then I see 65.3. I'm thinking the numbers are decreasing, which we mean, right? Getting small, right? And then do the numbers keep going down? They do. That ends it. Now, we always like to kind of put one zero there, though, in front of a decimal. Makes it easy to see the decimal. Gets us to focus on it, although it's, I don't think it's a math rule. I don't think, you know, it's going to call the math police and say, Roger, yes, we have a call. Yes, we have a boy and a girl that have not put the zero in front of the decimal point. So let's go ahead and determine, do we think that's the rule? I'm going to add that 6 tenths onto the 64.1. Uh, now here I have 64 and 7 tenths. If I add one more 6 tenths onto that, then I should get to my 65 and 3 tenths. Woo-wee! Yeah, yeah. You know, Mr. War, you just covered up your line for where the rule was. Oops, okay, let's see. I guess I'm gonna have to fix that with an eraser. Come on, eraser. Ooh, there you go. We'll make them a little bit shorter. There! <laughs> hey, let's extend them. Wee! There you go, right there. Now I have my room for my rule, which we know was six tenths and was subtracting, remember? Subtract six tenths. Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it says write the first four terms of the sequence. The rule. Wow, look at this. Start at 35 hundredths, add 15 hundredths. So we're going to be starting at 35 hundredths. Then, oops, you know what I just noticed? I did not put my 64 and 7 tenths in here. I know you guys were shouting through the video. I actually heard you. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and come over here then and start off. It says start at 35 hundredths and then maybe add to 15 hundredths. Well, I'm going to see if we can't do a little bit of mental math. All right, five, you add that on there. Well, aren't we going to get 50? I think so. 50 hundredths. Then we're going to get 65 hundredths. Oop, that small point. Get in there. Okay, and then we're going to add another 15. That's going to be 80. Oh, my goodness. It's over. That's right. Another video. Gone. Poof. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Wara. You should really consider decaf. Anyway, my friends, thank you so much for being a part of this video. It is so awesome that you were watching and with me, even though I can't really see you. But you know what? It's come to that time. That's right. Live long and prosper.